Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Friday Night Football here at the South Avenue Sports Complex. We're up here high atop the Bill Soroka Broadcast booth. I am Bill Soroka, joined by a cast of thousands up here, uh, including half of uh, Yaden, I believe. The entire Penwood staff is up here um, and, and their TV crew. So we have a full booth, no doubt breaking the fire code and any building code. But we have some Friday Night Football for you. Your Interboro Bucks against the Penwood Patriots. Bucks coming in at 0 and 7. And zero wins, seven losses on the year. Unfamiliar territory if you're a Bucks fan. Bucks are going to kick off. Penn Woods high powered offense will take the field. And Penn Wood immediately passes the 40 yard line to the 45 near midfield. Jordan Jones, the man who grabbed the kick out of midair. And there's Patriots and Desmond Johnson Jr. Standout quarterback will take the field at the 47. And you'll see Desmond Johnson Jr. pretty much throw the ball. You see four wide receivers, one running back aligned in the slot, it, probably just to block. Penwood likes to throw it. And Johnson right off the bat, first pass is dropped. Pass intended for Mike Price, right in his hands, and he dropped it. Desmond Johnson, a big boy, six foot two, 250 pounds, and he's gotten bigger every year. I remember being here a couple years ago saying how good I thought Desmond Johnson was as a sophomore starter and how much I really thought he was going to be a formidable prospect, and he's just a... Shade away, really, from breaking the Delco record for passing yards. Teddy Crosley with that tackle. So it'll be third down and seven. Ball right at midfield. It's homecoming night here at South Avenue. We'll have all the homecoming festivities for you as well. And we'll stay with you on the broadcast as long as this game remains competitive. Johnson, he'll run. Johnson, they had him bottled up, but now he's breaking down the sideline. Now he cuts back inside, and he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Finally corralled by Keeney, who came all the way back. May have been Aiden McDevitt that finally made it all the way back, but either way, Desmond Johnson Jr. with 31 yards on the ground. Number of key Bucks players out tonight. You see Mike Billups on the sideline on crutches. Vince Kalodner also starter, uh, not able to play tonight. Hand off to Robert Dolan. Dolan will get inside the 15 to the 14. Minute 20 in, Penwood inside the red zone on a brisk and blustery night. Temperature got as high as 67 degrees today. We're certainly below that now, probably in the low 60s, high 50s, maybe mid 50s, and with a little bit of a wind to make it feel even colder. Johnson's pass could be intercepted, but nice job defensively getting in front of the ball. Maybe not a great timing on the jump. Either way, broken up on the defensive side. So third down and about four. Johnson, pressure up the middle, screen, oh, and it was tipped, but the screen was grabbed by number one, Elijah Guyplay, but it was tipped. And 
I thought for a, a hot minute there, we had a chance in an interception. Jeremiah Butts, who plays generally on tight end on the offensive side, jumped up, tipped it, but guy play got it and took it all the way down to the four-yard line for a first down, so it'll be first and goal Patriots. Patriots lined up two wide receivers. This time they have two tight ends in. What could be a run and play. It is. Guy play again. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage. The good interior pressure there by the Bucks defensive line, McDevitt and Keeney. Pentwood, no need to huddle. This time they'll send another wide receiver out to the far end of your screen. Johnson, as usual, in the backfield by himself. And predictably a run for Johnson. He gets to the outside and he'll walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Desmond Johnson. Soon as the backfield emptied out, everybody in the stadium should have seen the run coming. Bucks unable to stop it. It'll be 6 nothing in favor of the Patriots. So we're 2 minutes and 35 seconds in. Patriots with a 6 nothing lead. We'll take a stab at an extra point. The holders, Malik Brooks, kick is up and good. Nagby, the kicker, Thomas Nagby, handles the place kicking and I believe the punting duties as well. But Nagby drills it through, so it's 7 nothing in favor of the Penwood Patriots. Sweet sounds of the Interbury student section. Let's say homecoming bring out not only our best and brightest, but also some of the others. So we apologize for those audible obscenities that you may have heard in the background. Nagby will tee it up at the 40. Back deep will be Myers. Fasaro. And flag on the play. Jahel Butler, he's the man back deep. He was going to receive that kick. Penwood, I believe, jumped off sides. Butler had made that nice play, uh, one or two plays before the touchdown, um, where he jumped in front of the route and knocked the ball down uh, as the cornerback. So Penwood now kick off from the 35, so the Bucks returners will jump up to the 20. And again, it's Myers, Fisaro, and Butler. We'll see which direction they go this time. time it goes the direction of Myers it skids through his legs he'll pick it up at the 21 run towards the home bench and cut back to the uh, center of the field he'll get about five or six on the return and Mike Zane and the Bucks offense will give it to him at the 26 and Bucks just absolutely beleaguered by injuries no question, your top offensive lineman, Mike Billups, uh, not able to play. So that fills a big void at the tackle position. Yeah. 
Zane to pass. Going deep has got a man. And through the arms. Ball was there. I mean, receiver had to maybe just stutter step a little bit. Fasaro unable to come down with it. Fasaro had a step or two, and the ball was there. Just unable to make the catch and convert the big play. And that was old school Steve Lennox there, throwing X fly on the first play of the game. Now they go back to the ground. You see the dust on the field. It's just, uh, it's been that kind of, like, last two months or so. We just have not had a lot of rain. Even the rain we do have hasn't been steady. It's just been more of a mist. And I don't care how much you try to water this 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 field or a anything, really. Um, you know, you look at the lawns around the Delaware Valley, and anybody who doesn't have a built-in sprinkler system is hurting. Their lawn's hurting. Zane, ball tipped, and it'll be fourth down. So what you would imagine would be three and out for the Bucks. Bucks special teams onto the field. Penn will send one man back to return. Mike Price, who was the kick returner, also handled the punt returning duties. Zane, the quarterback, also going to punt, as he has for throughout the year. Zane with a step, and fires off a nice punt. Price, two-handed catch at the 38, has some running room. Price, they're going to call a face mask on that play. I'm not sure he got his face mask, but if he, and if he did, it was kind of just a little tug, but they're going to get 15 more on the play. They're going to say Keeney grabbed hold of the face mask, and I think it's going to make bring this ball inside the 30 to about the 30 to about the 26 maybe. That's a weak flag if you ask me. Johnson and the Patriots, 26-yard line. This is their line of scrimmage. Already up seven. Johnson set to pass. Pumps once. Runs right. Fires a dart over his intended receiver. That's headed for a mean Stevens, and it really never had a shot. But if you saw the trajectory of that football, you see that Desmond Johnson throws missiles. And the fact that he was able to do that on the run under pressure makes it all the more impressive. This time, hand off to Malik Brooks. Brooks. Breaks through, Brooks into the end zone, touchdown. Not a great deal of resistance there put up by the Bucks defense. And 7.50 to go in quarter number one. It's 13-0. Nagby out there for the extra point. Nagby's kick couldn't be any more straight down the middle. And 14-0 in favor of 
the Pentwood Patriots. At some point, if there's a break in the action, perhaps we'll get a shot down here. These uh, young Yish ladies in the yellow T-shirts, they are Bucks cheerleading alumni, uh, many of whom, some, some of them are more recent alumni, some of them uh, from, you know, sort of back in the day. I talked to a couple of young ladies that were among my, uh, fir in my first class way back when, uh, going back 20-some 20, 20 years now. Um, but they're still looking, you know, as young as ever. But it's Bucks Cheerleader Alumni Night here at South Avenue Sports Complex and Homecoming Night. So even if the action on the football field isn't going the way we want, and Jeremiah Butts trips over Sean Myers, and ball be spotted at the 20. 7.46 to go. Quarter number one. Bucks are in a hole. Zane and the boys out for possession number two. And it's Myers. Sean will get about two, maybe one. Wrestled down by Robert Dolan. He's given credit for two yards there, so sec second down and eight. Not much on that carry. Perhaps even a loss of a half a yard or so. So third and long. We'll see if they try and dial up a pass play here. You imagine they would. See if Zane can't find somebody over the middle here for a First down catch, four wide. But your wide receiver to the nearest part of your screen. It's been probably their best receiver this year. They go screen to Fasaro, and he doesn't get much. In fact, he loses. Loss of four. And it's punt time. They're lined up, but they're going to go. But this is going to be the quick kick. And that punt will travel 17 yards. So once again, good field position. We're halfway through quarter number one. Penwood on the field for the third time. And the umpire will spot it at looks like we're going to go at the 29 yard line so really good field position uh, in each of the drives for Desmond Johnson Jr. and the Penwood Patriots Got Clay play back with Johnson. He's going to step once, fire it. He's got a man. Not going to get much, though. Jordan Jones. Actually, uh, probably when it's all said and done, lose a yard on that play. A 
That was Crosley with the stop, but he just grabbed the back of the jersey, hung on for dear life, and swung Jones around until he finally went to the ground. Officially, no gain on the play. This time it's Clay play. Flag, two flags, Clay play. Probably going to take it to the end zone. He does, but it's coming back. And, and then once they get to the second level, I mean, it's pretty much they're pretty much gone. And it didn't happen this time, but um, so they'll drive Penwood back ten yards. Be at the 39-yard line, so it'll be second down at 20. They put it back to the 40, so it's spot foul. So really, we're looking at second down at 21. Johnson, quick screen. And they'll get back to the original line of scrimmage and then some. Malik Brooks still on his feet. Malik Brooks to the 15. Malik Brooks stepped out at the 15. I don't care what anybody says. They're going to call him down at the seven. He may have gotten to the ten before he stepped out, but they're going to give him the seven-yard line. The first down. 33 on that quick screen. And everybody in tightened up. Johnson just with clay play. And Johnson on the keeper. Eludes one tackler and out of bounds just outside the one yard line or just outside the goal line. So they're not going to give him the touchdown. They're going to say basically he's just, it looks like he's inches short. Johnson keeps again, looking for a hole, looking for an opening, and he's being ruled in. So touchdown, Desmond Johnson, his second. Penwood will be up 20. Nagby through. So it's 21 nothing. Happy to say we've been joined here at South Avenue Sports Complex by a couple of uh, Academy Park football players. Good to see them out here sending their support, showing their support for their Del Valle League rivals. At least that's what it seems like they're doing. 422 to go in quarter number one. Nagby will tee it up at the 40.
It's Fasaro. Fasaro brings it towards the home bench, but it's not going to get much past the 25. They'll give him the 27 when it's all said and done. And lose a yard on first down. Second down and 11, I formation set. Zane stops, pops through the arms of Fasaro. Little trickery there. It goes to Butler. He'll get up to the 30. So it'll be fourth and seven. And Zane with the quick kick. It's going to send Brown scurrying, but the Bucks are going to wind up down in that ball at the 34. Oh, Johnson, four wide receivers, two on each side. And it's Glay play, ball loose. And, of course, Penwood picks it up. That was Brown that picked it up, so every ball bouncing the way of the Penwood Patriots. So you get out past midfield, pick up a fumble. Short pass goes for a couple. Second down five inside the 40 to the 37. Brown 
Takes the carry, spins, he'll get a couple. So with a minute 12 to go, Third down and four. Bucks hoping for a stop. Johnson shuffles his feet. Johnson staves off some would be tacklers. Finally, about eight or nine bucks. I don't know what that flag is. I can't even imagine what that flag would be. It came from like left field. I mean, the Bucks did like literally nothing wrong there. So if this is on the box, it's a terrible call. I'm gonna call illegal hands to the face on Penwood. Bucks should just decline it, make it fourth down. They won't. So this will drive back Penwood. Another 15. Oh, yeah, just five yards, yeah. I, I. So they did decline the penalty, which is what they should have done in the first place. Penwood thought they were gonna decline it, so they took the huddle about 20 yards deep, and now the coach realized that they're not gonna make it back in time. So I'm wondering what the heck is going on there. So too is uh, Chris Milanich here. You were wondering, weren't you? I know you were. So I guess to reset, Johnson brought down by about nine different Interboro Bucks. They give him, quote unquote, forward progress to the 40, which is probably about the right call. The illegal hands to the face penalty against Penwood is declined. So Lennox elects to take the play, which will result fourth down and nine. Penwood takes forever to get back to the line, so they have to call timeout. And now we're going to be back to game action. Three wide receivers all the way to the right, left of your screen. Glay play in motion. Johnson with a man over the middle streaking. He throws an absolute beauty. Incomplete. And truth be told, it should have been caught for a touchdown about nine yards deep in the end zone. So a stop for the Burroughs defense. Bucks will take over at the 40, their best field position. 31.9 to go. Bucks alumni cheerleaders stunt like for real. I talked to a few of the ex Flyers earlier, you know, before the game. Said, "Are you going to get? You going to stunt? You going to go up in the air today?" And they said, "Heck no!" But it looks like some of them are. <laughs> a first down pass to Fasaro through his hands. He took a shot for his troubles.
Bucks yet to pick up a first down here in quarter number one. Inside handoff. That's Butler. So 45, the Bucks with a little bit of at least really what amounts to hurry up, but they don't get the playoff before the quarter, so we'll switch sides, which shouldn't take long, and be back at it in quarter number two. After one quarter of play, 21-0 in favor of the Penwood Patriots. Our friends at Penwood with a nice sophisticated live stream of this game. We've uh, been teasing a live stream all year. Maybe just maybe it'll be next week. Who knows? Sure would like to do at least one before the season ends. Our uh, athletic director, assistant athletic director, interim athletic director, Joe Barrett, tried to get me on with their broadcast. They wanted no parts of me. So the heck with them. Oh, third down and five. Bucks looking for that elusive first down. Zane stops, fires, and incomplete. In and out of the hands of Butler. Flag down on the play as well. Flag's on the near side of your screen. We'll wait and see as the referee's caucus holding on the defense. So that'll be a first down of the automatic variety. So ball on the other side of the 50 for the first time. Bucks sent two men in motion, but not during the snap, so it's all good. Head of steam there for Myers, and he gets stood up pretty good at the 40. A pretty solid hit there by Malik Brooks. Just 35 seconds in the quarter number two. Bucks on the move. Penwood jumps off sides and they'll just call it. So that'll be another first down. So. The two first downs for your inner borough Bucks have come via the penalty. Tight eye formation. It goes to Myers. Myers tripped up. Get a yard or two. Amin Stevens goes down low, trips up Myers. Two on the carry for Sean. It's time they sweep it. Jahel Butler, he cuts inside and gets maybe three or four on the play. A 
Well, nice wind picking up here. Um, you can see the signs um, on the Hillcrest Ave side of the stadium blowing, you know, blowing to the point that you can't even see them and what they say. And now the swirling wind is taking really up all the signs. Not exactly what you call gale force, but it's still a pretty significant wind as Myers tries to sweep outside and is brought down at the 28. This dust kicking up does absolute wonders for all the folks with allergies out there, myself included. Nine and a half to go, quarter number two. Bucks, fourth down and four. Looking for another first down. Zane pumps, fires, incomplete. And he'll turn it over on downs to the Penwood Patriots. 9.15 to go in quarter number two. Again, we have one last shout out for the Interboro Bucks alumni cheerleaders as the Bucks sort of like current cheerleaders are heading over to the Penwood Patriots side to do a little number for their fans that are in attendance. And Johnson dumps it off, incomplete. Jordan Jones, the antenna receiver. And the straight up the gut, clay play. 50, 40, if he picks up a block, he's gone. He cuts back inside, and 71 yards later, Glay play in for a touchdown. Is there any laundry on the field? That could be really the Bucks' only hope. So there was a flag. I didn't actually see where it landed, and I didn't see where it is now, but there is a flag somewhere. But that was a long one for Isaiah Glayplay. And they wipe off the flag, so touchdown, Penwood. Not sure what the delay is in kicking this extra point. Or really in anything that we do for the rest of the night. Our Bucks alumni cheerleaders. Still pretty bold. I can't imagine a lot of them are doing a great deal of cheerleading right now. Uh, probably, you know, maybe a couple of them are coaching, you know, a local CYO team or something of that nature. But uh, I can't imagine. Um, the, the, these young, you know, youngish women who were serving as flyers here are doing a whole lot of flying anymore. So even going up and just you know lifting up the place card um, is a bit of a risky venture. 
So hats off to them, and we thank them, and I'm sure they're having great fun coming out here. We're living past memories on the sidelines here at South Avenue Sports Complex. Nagby with the boot. Ball we brought up to the 42 yard line. I think that was Crosley who actually had the um, kick return. And it's a Bubba Phillips sighting. Who come in at the fullback position, so I'm not exactly sure why he wasn't in in the first quarter, but. If Bubba could be anything, he'll get the handoff. He'll fight forward for a yard or two. About four. A second down about six from the 46 yard line. Zane stops and fires. He's got Fasaro and doesn't have Fasaro. Through the hands. So it'll be third down and six. I formation, similar setup as last time. Zane looking and incomplete. I was headed to Butler as well, but unable to make that connection. So it'll be fourth down. And what, you know, at this point, really, it doesn't. I don't see a whole lot of benefit in punting or quick kicking or whatever. But the you, they may very well decide to kick it away. Well, Penwood certainly thinks they're going to go. Zane, the quick kick, and they're just going to let this one go. And actually, it takes a very nice inner barrow bounce, and it'll go out of bounds at the six yard line. So, Zane with one of his better kicks. It'll be a 48-yard punt for Mike Zane. Pentwood will take over. 7.41. They're up 28. We'll see if the defense, the defense can't put together a stop. So Penwood will be coming this way. Four wide and another dump off pass. For as well as Johnson throws a deep ball, his short pass game could probably use a little fine tuning. That's the third or fourth ball that he's thrown like that where he's one hopped it to the nearest receiver. Oh, second down and 10.
And another big run for Penwood. This could be trouble. This could be really big trouble. Malik Brooks still on his feet. Brought down all the way at the 31 yard line. 63 on that carry. And they just seem to have big play after big play after big play. They'll spot it at the 32. Penwood able to get to the line in time. Johnson pump fakes, fires one up wide open. Touchdown. And Mike Price had about three steps on a defender. And Johnson just threw a absolute dart right between the one and the zero. And it's 34 nothing. Now, for whatever reason, the, the PIAA, at least to my knowledge, and I swear this changes every week, doesn't run the clock until the second half. Nagby's kick is up and good. And what I fail to understand here is not so much a football fan or a Bucks fan, but as just a person with common sense, is if this was an MMA fight or a boxing match and you saw something this one-sided, the referee would step in and stop the fight. And it's 35 nothing. We've played 17 minutes of game time, and, you know, it's 35 nothing. Bucks will get the ball back. We'll see how the rest of the half goes. We have fe halftime festivities, float competition, introduction of the homecoming court. Perhaps a performance by the marching band. And then we, we can only imagine it'll be running clock for the second half. And Nagby kicks off. This time it goes deep. Fasaro. Fasaro tries to find a seam. Has one temporarily, but it seals up pretty quickly. Ball at the 36-yard line. Myers in motion. It's going to him. Picked. And this is going to go back the other way. Mike Price, who saw that play coming as soon as Myers went in motion. So I believe that was Price anyway with the pick six, but either way, it's 41 nothing in favor of Penwood. And there's a play never got off the ground. Not sure if Interboro just jumped or if the center didn't snap the ball or what exactly went wrong, but a bunch of people moved and the ball didn't.
The kick is no good. So really the first thing Penwood's done wrong all game. Have a missed extra point. On top of it, I swear no time went off the clock on that last play. So 6.24 to go, Bucks back at it, 30-yard line, the line of scrimmage. Zane and the boys are going to try and get something going. Bubba Phillips to fullback, Myers a tailback. Myers ahead for about three or four to the 34. And these boys are going to keep giving it a go. Certainly, you know, not going to have any quit in them or whatever. I mean, they're just going to try and get a touchdown on the board. Hope to be able to make a stop. It's time it goes to Butler, who gets about three yards shy of a first down. So third and three, ball at the 37, and a, I'm pretty sure that was the Bucks that jumped off sides there. So third and three will quickly become third and eight. Zane. Basically all Zane could do is duck his head and try and throw that one up. It was intended for Flamer. And the play really never had a shot. Zane just fired it in Flamer's direction and went into the out of bounds. But he had two guys headed right towards him. So fourth and eight. This time, Penwood thinking that Zane's going to kick it. He does, and they'll let it bounce and then pick it up. Probably not the smartest decision in the world, but nonetheless, Mike Price I'm thinking now, just in, in looking at the number, that was probably Jordan James that had that pick six, but I don't know for sure. 
But again, either way, it's 41 nothing. Desmond Johnson Jr. and the Penwood Patriot offense back on the field. Four wide. Penwood throwing deep. Intercepted. And honestly, that's what they get. I mean, throwing 41 nothing up in a game that's just one sided is just a jerk move. There's absolutely no reason for that throw a ball downfield like that up 41. So it's intercepted anyway. The Bucks will take possession right back. Zane, he pumps once, he'll fire it up, it flutters, and nobody gets it. Really not in a position for anybody to make the catch on either team. Ball got a little bit of air underneath of it and just kept it up. time uh, Butler and he'll be tackled at the legs what you see you know really good execution on both sides I mean the high-powered offense but Daniel Dogan right there makes a solo tackle just able to you know dive down at the legs of Butler and bring him down for only a minimal gain of about two two and a half yards set up a third and long for the Bucks which is really where they've been living on offense Pressure on Zane. Zane not going to make it. The sack on the play is Penwood gang tackles. So now it'll be fourth and really long, and in what you would think would be just a punt. And Zane's kick, end over end, fielded at the 46. Price inside the 30 to the 28. Clock operator wisely runs off about five, six extra seconds. Flag on the play. I didn't see what type of nonsense took place, but it looks like some type of an unsportsmanlike or personal foul. Not sure on whom. But two referees threw a flag simultaneously. So that was on Penwood. And um, Or perhaps it was just offsetting. I didn't even look to see. Was it offsetting? Okay, so offsetting fouls on both players. So no change of uh, line of scrimmage. Johnson dumps it off, finds Glay play. He 
Able to shake past the initial tackler and get about five. Penwood has quite a few players in motion. Three wide receivers to the near end. Johnson tipped and still grabbed by Glee play. That's the second time that's happened tonight. He'll get a yard. Johnson fires one up over the middle. Ball was intended for Jones. And truthfully, not a real, not a real player friendly ball, meaning that um I mean that ball intended for Jones would have required him to reach up and grab it. And Ray Scanlon had an opportunity to take his head off there. If, if the ball was down a little bit lower. Not saying he would have done it, but he should have done it. Again, throwing, throwing up 41, you're asking for a lot of stuff to happen. Johnson not tackled. Bubba Phillips got a hold of him. Johnson's still on his feet. 18 flags down. He somehow finds a man who goes in for a touchdown. All kinds of craziness there. If this touchdown stands, then that truly will be so typical of this football season that we've been watching. And it's going to be a hold on Penwood, so. And they can't take the play. I mean, in the end, it's going to be a spot foul from about the 43. They're going to drive him back, so it's going to be fourth and really long. So it'll wind up being, a, a, on the play, a penalty of 34 yards. Penwood will call timeout. I mean, I don't know if they'll just, they're going to punt it or if they're just going to try and throw it into the back of the end zone. So a minute five to go in the quarter. That's what separates us from halftime festivities. So Interboro back in the, uh, the prevent defense. Johnson will fire it downfield. It should be intercepted. It won't be. And I can't believe this. Jordan Jones into the end zone. Somehow that's not a celebration flag. So it's 47-0 extra point pending with 
two seconds to go. Pretty safe to say we'll have running clock in the second half. Nagby up and good. I can't even really explain that last play to you. I mean, I, I'll give it a shot. Desmond Johnson Jr. throws one up. Like, truth be told, probably should have been intercepted because it hung up in the air a little bit. James goes up and grabs it, and then there's really just no one to tackle him, and he darts into the end zone. Nagby with the ball teed up at the 40. Set to kick off. Back deep. Headed to Myers. Myers finds his way to the bench, broad out of bounds. Penwood holds up on the tackle. I agree with the no call there. Tackle was made a little bit out of bounds, but truthfully, like um, it, they, they didn't make any attempt to like, be dirty. And Bubba Phillips, not much. 34 seconds. We'll see if the Bucks are going to run a play again. Um, they're not calling a timeout, which. So I don't even know that they'll be able to run another play, and that very well might be. I mean, there's certainly not a sense of urgency. Now, they are a little, hu like, hustling up to the line. So they very well, with 10 seconds left, might be able to get another playoff. Zane, he will. It goes to Bubba. And that'll be the end of the half. So after one half of play, it's Pennwood 48. Bucks nothing. Stay tuned for the halftime festivities. We'll see you in a little bit. <laughs>
Thank you.